It's now my pleasure to introduce our next keynote speaker, Johan Rockström. This is Johan Rockström, director of the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research and a professor in Earth System Science at the University of Potsdam. He's an internationally recognized scientist on global sustainability issues and led the development of the Planetary Boundaries Framework for human development in the current era of rapid global change. Hello, Johan Rockström. You're with us from Potsdam outside of Berlin, and it's great to have you on the broadcast. We are all ears. Great to be with you. Thanks a lot. I'll be um, just uh, sharing my screen here. I hope you'll uh, be able to uh, see. I'm trying to choose. There we are. All right. So, <clears throat> dear friends, we are at 1.1 degrees Celsius warming caused by human-induced climate change and our transgression of planetary boundaries. We see a 2020 year, the best devastating pandemic, behind it, another year of extremes. We have, as shown here on the left hand, the dramatic perfect storm arising in the Horn of Africa with uh, three consecutive years of drought, creating food insecurity, colliding with uh, desert locust invasions, eating up crops of small scale farmers, colliding with COVID-19, creating riots in cities in Kenya, causing the kind of social instabilities we do not want to see. The North Atlantic season, attributions clear from science with the amplitude of extreme hurricanes. 2020 was a year when the record number of hurricanes hitting into the Caribbean was so large, 30 storms, that we even saw uh, the NOAA running out of names and starting to call them alpha, beta, gamma to be able to incorporate the extreme frequency. It was a year that started with the extreme forest fires, northern hemisphere heat waves, Siberia at a 38 degrees Celsius temperature record, increasing the pace of permafrost thawing and extreme events of floods, droughts, heat waves across the world. But that's not the focus here to really provide the scientific justification for the exponential roadmap for a prosperous and secure, equitable future for humanity within the safe operating space on Earth. The focus is here. The focus is on the stability of the entire planet, here shown by the Apollo 8 classic photo of Earthrise. We actually today have the scientific evidence that over the last three million years, shown here on the x-axis, the world's global mean temperature has never exceeded two degrees Celsius warming. You see on the y-axis here, the deviation from the zero point, the pre-industrial average temperature of 14 degrees. Isn't this quite extraordinary? The Earth system has been subject to natural variabilities of earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, orbital forcing, but always been able to keep through its climate physical and biological feedbacks, the system within a very narrow corridor, deep ice age, minus four degrees Celsius, warmest period, never achieving or reaching two degrees Celsius of warming. Today, we are on a trajectory that would take us well beyond to a point we haven't been in for the past five, six million years. Do we need more scientific evidence that we want to stay away from well, from two degrees Celsius and aim for 1.5? Well, here is an additional piece of evidence if you need it. We have now summarized the tipping elements that regulates the climate system, showing that nine here in black, nine of the known 15 tipping elements that regulates the stability of your system are on the move, showing signs of approaching tipping points. We know that these have multiple stable states. We know that they have, during the last 12,000 years, since we left the last ice age, predominantly been in a state that have been dampening, cooling, and reducing global warming, and they're now approaching points of crossing thresholds where they could start irreversibly self-amplify self -amplify warming and causing a drift of the whole Earth system away from a stable state that can support humanity. As if that was not enough, look at the arrows. This is the scientific evidence of cascades, where we started to learn 
that all these tipping elements in the self-regulating complex earth system are interconnected. And look at many of these arrows start from the Northern Hemisphere Arctic. This Arctic summer ice is melting exponentially. Greenland is melting rapidly, releasing fresh water, cold fresh water into the North Atlantic, slowing down the North Atlantic circulation of heat, slow down by 15%, the Gulf Stream that makes it possible to live in parts where I originate from in Scandinavia, which impacts on the Amazonian monsoon, causing more frequent droughts and forest fires, but also locking warm water in the Southern Ocean, accelerating the ice melt of West Antarctica, which just a few weeks back was shown scientifically and unequivocally to have crossed the tipping point. This is the reality we're facing. This is the turbulence of the Anthropocene. We know that that translates to a global carbon budget. We know that that translates to a pathway. The pathway shown here is very clear. If we bend the global curve of emissions in 2020, last year, we have to have a soft landing by 2040. If we bend and are not able to bend until 2025, it will be 2035. This is the reality. We have a finite space for the trajectory we're following. In the 1.5 degrees Celsius report from the IPCC, the journey was spelled out very clearly. To land at 1.5, we have to follow the green path here, bend the global curve of emissions at the beginning of this decisive decade, which we have now entered, and land in 30 years' time. This translates in what we've called the carbon law. The carbon law, which is inspired by the Moore's law, which stipulates that to follow the green path, we have to cut emissions by half every decade. That's why it's so reassuring that we're starting to see science-based targets of 50% reductions by 2030. But unfortunately, we're following the red path. We're still on a trajectory that would take us well beyond this point. But that's not enough. And it's really important to understand that the exponential roadmap and the race to zero is only one part of the puzzle. And it's shown here in the gray curve, meaning decarbonizing the world economy and having a net zero world economy in just 30 years time. But we also have to have a transition of the world's food system, which is the single largest emitter of greenhouse gases, 25%, shown here from the dark brown wedge that has to transition into becoming a net sink in orange in the same period, in 30 years time, an agricultural revolution. But not even that is enough. We also need to keep the carbon sinks and natural ecosystems intact, both on land in green and in the oceans in blue. So all of this is a global sustainability transformation. And as if that is not enough, we cannot only rely on that stewardship of the planet. We also need to invest in carbon capture and storage and negative emission technologies, which is shown here in orange. So this is our challenge. That's why the exponential roadmap of decarbonizing the world's energy system is like the low hanging fruit that we have to do very rapidly. And it translates to such a simple guide we today emit 40, roughly, gigatons of carbon dioxide from fossil fuel burning. It has to be cut by half to 20 by 2030, to 10 by 2040, to five, the little residual and difficult to abate sectors by 2050. That is the landing zone, that's the journey. The first wedge is the next nine years, go from 40 to 20. We have that now spelled out very clearly. And it can be scaled when you think of it. Anyone can cut emissions by half over the next nine years. Individuals, household, companies, cities, and the world at large. Is this so then? Well, the outcomes for humanity could actually spell disaster. This is a paper that came out just a few months back showing for the first time what would happen just in terms of temperature and heat waves on human health and mortality if we cross the threshold of known physiological capacity limit for human health in temperature. What you see here is in color, the vulnerability of countries. The blue and green are the wealthy countries in the world and the redder the color, the more vulnerable the underlying societies are. In the black blobs here, you see the countries that today have mean average temperatures that exceed 29 degrees Celsius, a physiological threshold threatening human health and potentially with mortality outcomes. But if we continue burning fossil fuels as today, and just in 50 years time, exceeding three degrees Celsius warming would mean that in the meshed areas here are the regions that would in only 50 years time exceed 29 degrees Celsius of average temperature. 